where's the logic in that? But ICT, you're not the only one that can find profitable trades. You're right. But why are you trying to push with my concepts in an environment I'm not trying to touch? And I've already said it. If you win, it's coincidence. And I know it's painful for some of you to hear that. Like, there's no way. It's not, it's not coincidence. It's skill. I'm a monster. I'm, I'm, being, I'm being made into a monster. So like you said, you said I was going to be a monster. <laughs> yeah, okay. But you don't want to wreak havoc on your own account. Like Godzilla stomping around in Tokyo, destroying everything. That's your equity curve. You just, dis just totally dismantled it. In a short span of time, in the last two weeks, how much damage have you done? Not me. Not your broker. Not the method or the concepts. How much damage did you do? Uh-oh. That's a roll call for responsibility. That nobody wants to take initiative and stand up and say, yeah, I did it. But the ones that are ready to do that, they're ready to learn. I ignored it too. I tried to find some kind of external reasons why I was failing as a young man. And I promise you, knowing what I know now, looking back, it was always me. There was no other contributing factor. It was me. And when you come to grips with that and you accept it, it's liberating. Because then and only then can you start fixing the issues. But you have to be able to identify them and stop ignoring them or pretending they're not there. That's the reason why you're not finding success. You're arm wrestling things that need to be dealt with in you, the person. Every single one of my failed students are failures because they themselves won't listen. Where are you in all of that? You have to find yourself and I can't do it for you. No mentor can, no teacher can do that. You have to allow yourself the time to find out who you are, how you're going to derail yourself. And you will. And you'll know right when it's about to happen. And that's why you're supposed to journal. And for the folks that don't want to journal, oh, I ain't got time for journaling, man. <laughs> I got money to make, man. I got time to be journaling. I ain't writing books. I guarantee you these people don't make money. Not consistently. I promise you, they don't make money. Every high tech position in the world, all of them keep data on their performance, KPIs, every industry, every, pr every food producer, every commodity manufacturer, producer, any kind of company, they all have performance stats. That means they're doing what? They're journaling. Now, for the folks that don't want to journal in their trades and their development, doesn't that make you feel stupid? Like you're going to walk through this, no real effort is just going to fall in your lap. It's going to be easy. Why do that? I ain't got to spend time writing in the journals. I can't make money on those old moves anyway. Why would, I, why would I even want to do that? You're going to continuously work the rest of your life. And you're going to be even more miserable because you won't find success in this. And you won't be successful in your job. And you'll be miserable. The rest of your life, you've been relegated to the shared desk with Carl. Imagine that. The last thing you see before retirement is him smiling, saying, I told you, you'd never get out of here. I'm not obligated to do any of this for you. Just like you're not obligated to trade every day. Have you ever given yourself permission? Because I'm giving it to you right now. You have my permission as your mentor to not trade every day. In fact, that should be a goal for you. When you make money and you're new, stop. Let the week close in profit. That's a skill set. It's teaching patience. It's teaching enough to be content with enough. 
But ICT, it was only $1,100. I could have made, right, but did you make $1,100 at your job after taxes? No. So why are you going to risk it? You're not skilled yet. You're finding yourself. You have to continuously instill this cheerleading mindset as you're growing up in who you are eventually going to be in the, as a trader. You have to cheerlead yourself. You have to do that through journaling. Spend time looking at when you got it right. You're going to need those times. You're going to doubt yourself. You're going to doubt your future performance. If you try to trade every single day and you start going in the drawdown, here's another permission. You don't have to fix your drawdown right now. What? Yeah, you don't have to. Who says you had to do it right now? Who says you had to fix the drawdown and bring it completely back this week or this month? Who said that? You did. Or the people you hear others on social media crow on about, oh, this and that. Who's running your business? Them or you? Because if you're letting other people on social media impact your decisions about when and how you're going to trade, you're not running your business. If you're not running your business, who is? The people that don't care about it. And if they don't care about your business, believe me, they only care enough to see it fail. It would be nothing more pleasurable for them to see you fail and go on social media and complain and belly ache. Oh, I did it again to myself. And they feel great about themselves because they're failing in privacy. So when your heavens are like brass and you can't find your way out of a position you're in, in terms of profit, close the trade. As soon as you recognize that you feel like you got to pray for the outcome of that trade to be different than what you think is already going to happen, because you know you're looking at the charts, you see it. Something in the underpinnings of the marketplace have shifted. You recognized it, and now your conscience is telling you it's time to hit the exit ramp. Just don't take the exit in South Carolina like I did. You have to stop, remove yourself from the risk, and walk away from it.